pleasure from the suffering of black people. The industrial model today is best able to deal with that. Uh, I don't think they dropped this. I think they, they some our time was the one hour with Kudis, who says that we shouldn't presuppose such a thing as racism uh, being prima facie accordingly. Those things are built out of habit, they tend to learn and grow. And maybe even more importantly, they have a argument that emphasizes and uh, imperils of an exclusive focus on anti-blackness. It says that it undermines the epistemic goal of more to focus on symbolic aims. Um, basically, it discourages the more difficult granular work that actually would cause changes in social attitudes or material conditions to emerge. Um, and then, as a result, they do kind of think they win. It's difficult to predict any psychological value going to tier framework. Um, within their framework, they win because even if, you know, under almost any coherent ethical paradigm, it's impossible to justify five times in evidence, a whole bunch of nuclear uh, harm falling black people, and none of your blink arguments at uniqueness or are really explained in a meaningful way. I mean, I do think there's potential with the refs thing to like really do some damage here, but uh, you don't explain any of the consequence or what the alt does generate uniqueness for them or anything like that. And so it's a great game for the F at that point. That's how I saw it. I did kind of go through that quickly. I'm happy to answer questions later, but I assume they want to hear why they lost. Uh, in short, I vote on this pathology DA. I think that the kind of a bit no economy way kind of frames how I evaluate the framework. Arguments, I think that the AFS model debate universalizes state action, and I think anti-state or being pro-state or whatnot doesn't you know, matter when your model debate centers the state as the focus of change. So I think that's what the dissent is about. I think that like the impact of this is that it makes racial scholarship relevant, it prevents revolutionary action. I think that my ballot solves this with this DSRB argument. Um, in terms of like the anti-ethics debate that uh, Kay Hearn was talking about, I really don't care because they're going for a link with an extinction impact. And, you know, it really doesn't matter for me. But in terms of the open economy, I think that's the most important part of this debate. And in terms of this, I think that the Buddhist evidence is not really good at you know, really disproving the negative thesis that the open economy exists. I think the closest it gets is like, you know, the, there's a social construct that has a psychic impact. And I'm like, well, if it has a psychic impact, it's still pretty bad. And my ballot is still trying to you know, resolve it. I think that the Chico and Sullivan evidence provides a better explanation of the thesis, i.e. these examples of phobias and incarceration, you know, existing even if it's not profitable. I think the Stern study example is a lot more in depth to this predisposition to have black violence, the elevated serotonin levels of white mothers, and the apps argument that racist social systems influence the psyche begs the question of why that system is there or exists in the first place, which I think that the negative just has a more in-depth explanation to. I think that, you know, the forum needs to very clearly answer this argument because I think they're investing a lot of time into it knowing that, you know, that, that seems to be the trajectory of the debate that they're going towards. Um, I think in terms of, like, you know, even if this Hootis argument is true, it's really, like, does falsifiability matter or not? I think both teams need to talk about this more, you know, whether a theory has to be falsifiable or not. You know, I generally don't care or don't do care, really. There's no terminal impact to the theory being, you know, uh, falsifiable. And because of that, I just kind of defer to a better explanation of the theory in the first place. Uh, the open no economy thesis going negative means that I interpret the plan as an investment as open no fear of the other, which means that the link is true. That's kind of how I evaluate it. Uh, cool. Yeah, I agree a lot with uh, Rustic's uh, RFD. I do think that this good evidence isn't like what you all want to hang your hat on. And it isn't very like a principle. Like, does isn't very like doesn't really answer the solvent uh, argument. But I am voting negative. I think that because I'm winning. The hypothetical impacts of the plan versus the structural critique of the activity, I have to determine how my ballot can lead to some sort of mutual change for the start of the week. The framing of the way through an anti ethical framework means that I should prioritize revolutionary thinking and action that can result in the next ballot. Um, I think that the Houdin evidence isn't as strong against the study of the Sullivan evidence, it's indicating that confrontation between non black and black people leads to visceral reaction that can be reversed with pal palatable engagement. I also don't have a real ballot key reason uh, coming out of the 2AR, but I do know that voting negative can spill up to other education out of round. The Zamelin evidence also answers all the progress possible stuff, and I really don't have a fleshed out explanation as to how a critique of the state can lead to revolutionized organizing. And I get where the 2AR is going with the impact comparison debate, but I just don't have a sufficient answer as to why it gets good, nor do I have an answer as to the whole US and Russia are doing the same thing telling one another, which makes all of the state key points a little less convincing. The extension debate makes this debate really hard to evaluate because I'm forced to compare impacts on different methods of solvency. I'm still convinced that the negative securitization of the act of affirmative securitization is not worse due to the hypocritical nature of the United States. Like, yes, the act is to access the institution impact, but when the negative wins their anti ethical framework, I have to 
to vote for the team that might not see the most amount of lives, but the team that is able to resolve some form of violence and education. Questions? Comments? Um, I have a question about that RFD, the stuff about ballot key, what was the neg warranty of the you thought was a reason the bank could spill up? Um, like the two, like the Twitter just has like this, like this moment of like, we can lead to some sort of spill up out of round for like education. Um, like, hold on. Exactly. It's like the evolution of debate leads to hypo testing changing to other forms of debate. That's kind of how I saw that. How do you think the competition stuff interacts with that? Like all causes? Why didn't that like take that out for you? Like what do you mean? Like, oh, like the all causes like debate subjectivity stuff. I'm just confused why that was a defense. And one, I think that the subjectivity stuff of like we are like influenced by other things at around came a little bit too late for me. I think that there was a lack of like, also explanation of like yeah sure. Um, like we're influenced by like school and like family and whatever, but I don't think that there's a argument that is made in like both the one AR and the two AR of how like a wide debate isn't like a more impactful uh, like form of like subjectivity and like how we are like how we interact with debate leads to like how we lead to policymakers. I think Wait, that I'm a little confused because it seems with clouding on slide questioning. I mean, so I, I do. I did think you probably had on these things. The reason I didn't mention them is just because you really only do go for clash and impact. And so if you just yeah. think about this: if you win, your model of debate is good, and we're just comparing models hypothetically. It kind of goes to the same place in terms of you know we're just imagining what a debate follow our model versus what a debate follow theirs. And so you kind of like you know, and like if you win that, you automatically win. I think even if the ballot does spill up. And so it is kind of a weird emphasis when you're not going for an independent fairness and impact. Yeah, that makes sense. I think the thought process we were doing when we were doing subjectivity was to try to draw a distinction between content, so like all causes solve their stuff. Trying to make sure that they don't cause the education. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we've got to go, y'all. Thanks for judging. Yeah, you're good. Good luck. Um, the stuff about anti-ethics, there was a cross-application made in the 1AR from the T3 tier debate as a takeout to the anti-ethics stuff. Did you just not evaluate that? What were your thoughts on that? What exactly was the cross The Tylo evidence that says like deference politics are bad. It's like anti-ethics anti -ethic, anti is antithetical to the argument because like deference trades off with mobilization and ideas that they should actually take material action. Sorry, I didn't catch the last part. No, yeah, you're fine. It said like deference politics are bad and recreates that because there's no longer incentive to actually do like liberation, etc. It was the Tylo evidence that was in the card doc. Yeah, let me look at it because I... That's the explanation that I would have loved to hear. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, I understand they didn't answer that evidence explicitly, but if you said that in the 2 it made an implication for how that turns their, um, I guess, well, framework or model to be, like, I just need that explanation, because I get when, like, people drop cards, and you're like, oh, they dropped this card, you know, impact, but it kind of got lost, and, you know. You, so and, just more emphasis yeah, on that? Exactly. Make it, like, just in general, like, explicitly, if you're winning something, tell me why that matters, like, very clearly, like, you know, for um, the clash thing with the subjectivity, I think that if you said, you know, the impacts clash and explain how, um, What's it called? Um, what I was trying to say. In, in terms of clash, like you know, you get to the point that it's like it's not always good debate and reflects some argumentation. But the part that I was, you know, really wanting to hear more about is the more offensive. Reason. It's just like you know, this is why people come to this activity. This is why um, you know, in a sensitized research report, you all are, you know, just be more offensive in general with, with the types of arguments. Because I feel like throughout the most of the debate, you know, we're kind of giving them too much weight on many of these arguments and focusing on their arguments. Which what you really want to talk about, right, is your framework offense your case, which makes it kind of kind of holistically seem like you're playing defense when you want the ball in your court. Uh, what phrasing would you have preferred for the clash impact in the 2AR? Let me look at whatever. So, like, you know, you get to the point that it's like it makes people better arguer, you know, advocates, better arguing, persuading, and whatnot. Tell me again why that's important, right? What, what does it mean to be good at persuasion argument, right? What I guess. To, what do you advocate for, right? Like that, go one step further because you don't want people to. <laughs> the part below that material was like Clash is better for all of that because it turns their impacts, we do more research, so all their stuff about like learning and securitization stuff yeah. is accessed by the Clash and Patch. Just tell me that story. I think that like, just hang your head on what you're winning and sit on it for a whole minute of just explaining why Clash is important, why the answer is even if their thesis is true. Why question to prioritize? Uh, what two on our defense to clash do you think sufficiently mitigated it, or do you just think wholesale the dissat outweighs a clash impact even if it's not mitigated? Yeah, 
you know, I was really trying to think about it in terms of like, you know, is the impact bubble they want this other no economy thesis? I think that the impact in their framework argument outweighs. But in terms of the defense and compassion, I'm looking at that. I agree they didn't have a lot of defense to it. It's more just the thesis argument. Like again, in many of these debates, like it's they're always going to go on to an ontology argument or a little bit of you know, some thesis argument that they're always trying to win. And that's what you really kinda it always ends up being a framework debate about the thesis. Yeah, well, do you think what's the impact of the pathology to sub? Was it just like libidinal little economy, you create anti black violence? I, I voted on the racial scholarship, like you promote racial scholarship, um, and that you shouldn't universalize all your research around the state. But, you know, that's another impact I really didn't think about too far. Well, yeah, but like, what was the impact of racial scholarship? Like, is it like the racism, the little economy stuff? Yeah, I guess the scholarship resolves. The okay, thing. and then that was the reason you just didn't give us the app? Well, I, like, you could have that, I just don't think. Well, I guess in terms of plan implementation, Per se, it's kind of hard to think about that when you're talking about, like, your clash impact ends up being what type of research you incentivize, and their just is also what type of research you incentivize. But, but you gave us the app in this scenario? No, I didn't. Okay, did so not do not give us the app, yeah, so question the framework does that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Cool. Very good. Thank you.